In 1966, when Erika Sarbiti was ordained the first African Archbishop of the province of Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and Boga Zaire, it was a time for jubilation amongst the Anglicans in Uganda. But not everyone was in a celebratory mood. Like all the European archbishops before him, Erika was expected to preside over the main cathedral, Narmirambe. In order to understand the complexity of the situation, one must take a peek into the history of Uganda. At the time of its independence, the Republic of Uganda was a delicate merger of several previously independent states. Thanks to the British imperialists, this merger was forced to bear the name and capital of the nation that had aided their imperialist agenda the most, the central state of Buganda. Even the main cathedral Narmirambe, stood on a hill close to the palace of the king of Buganda. Needless to say, the British had placed Buganda in an enviable position, and this might have birthed a sense of entitlement among some. Keeping this in mind, it was not surprising that the church's new choice of archbishop left the Anglicans from Buganda enraged. According to them, only a subject of the king of Buganda, had the right to serve at the Narmirambe Cathedral. Erika Sarbiti was not from Buganda. He was born in 1903, in Arnkorli, a district in southwest Uganda. He accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior in 1939, during an East African revival meeting. Soon after, he began a radical life of evangelism. Over the years, he served as an ordained church minister at various ranks. The decision to ordain him archbishop had been based on his noble character, and his loyal service to the church, and to Jesus Christ. The church, was more than satisfied with him. It refused to cower to the tribalistic demands. But the opposition did not go away. One fateful day, an angry mob stormed the cathedral, seized Erika and dragged him on the ground, all the way out of the premises. They left him injured, and his pontifical vestments in tatters. This monstrous incident caused a bitter rift between the Anglicans of Buganda, and the rest of the church. It was so bitter that it forced the country's new president, Edi Armin, to play the role of mediator. The church insisted that the seat of archbishop could not be restricted to only Buganda. Buganda constituted only a small fraction of its followers. However, the meeting was fruitful in that the church agreed on a compromise. Narmirambe would be presided over by a bishop from Buganda. But, the All Saints Chapel, which was dominated by European and English-speaking congregants, was converted into a cathedral. All Saints Cathedral, would be the seat of the Archbishop of Uganda. It was still within the capital, but a safe distance away from the palace and politics of Buganda. On a personal level, the heinous experience did not break Erika's resolve to continue serving as Archbishop. Although his challenges within the church had been solved, his troubles were far from over. Shortly after, President Idi Amin, began unleashing his reign of terror. He set out on a quest to convert Uganda into a Muslim state. Inevitably, he declared enmity with Israel, and the church. Despite Armin's role in mediating the animosity of Buganda against his leadership, Erika was not afraid to publicly denounce the dictator's tyranny. Armin was furious with the church, not only for opposing him, but also for supporting Israel. He summoned Erika to explain himself. It was common knowledge that the people whom Armin summoned, usually returned dead, or went missing without a trace. Everyone knew that Erika would not leave that meeting alive, unless he could somehow appease the brutal dictator. Instead, he boldly declared that he believed in the Bible. And according to the Bible, Israel is God's chosen nation. Incensed, Armin stormed out of the meeting and did not return. By God's grace, Erika Sarbiti lived to tell the story. He retired shortly after in 1974, and returned to his home district. There, he continued to preach the good news of Jesus Christ 
until he died in 1988.